Before we get started with today's video, I need to preface this with three very important things. Uh, the first one being that I need to give a massive thank you to the inspirations of this project. Uh, that would be the YouTubers uh, Kevin from Set Too Much Productions and Andrew Baina. Uh, these guys have already sparked my interest in a lot of other extended range and low tuning uh, instrument capabilities and possibilities and such. Um, so I can't do enough justice to maybe what they've already kind of covered in uh, many videos and experiments they've done. Uh, so of course I would re highly recommend if you like that and also low tuned metal music. Those are the guys you want to de or definitely check out in my opinion. Number two, uh, there's going to be a lot of nerdy musical stuff in here. So if you just kind of want to skip all over that and maybe hear some tone demos, I'll lay out the timestamps for each section of this video, um, both in the caption of wherever you may be watching this, if this is Facebook, Instagram, or uh, if you're on YouTube, I'll have all those timestamps ready to go as well. Number three, I highly, 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 highly recommend you get yourself a good pair of headphones that have some quality bass in them or get yourself a pair of speakers that can uh, at least render some low or really low bass noises as well. Um, if you're watching this maybe through a phone or maybe some tiny like uh, earpod, uh, earpod <laughs> headphones, um, you're not maybe going to get the best experience watching this. So um, get your something like this and sit down and let's have some fun. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Tate and in today's video we're going to take a look at my little stupid mini adventure uh, to take one of my five string bass guitars and decide to play the how low can I actually tune this game. A very important question that populates the minds of modern metal bassists today. And in order to mod a bass into where I have this now um, in terms of tuning and keeping it actually stable enough to hold this, took a couple things into consideration just given some circumstances that I had to personally deal with um, in researching this video. I feel it's important to start this video off with talking about some of the really nerdy details of um, why this bass is now tuned like it is and um, why some of these notes that um, will be played in this video uh, sound the way they do. I should also give a fair warning, I have no sort of uh, formal music education. Uh, everything that I am referring to, at least, is as far as I know, just from being a goofy idiot browsing around on YouTube and Wikipedia just trying to figure out how some of this stuff works at the basic level. So pretty much the most common way I've learned about how to identify notes relative to what octave they're played in is through uh, what is called the scientific pitch notation. And this is to say if I play a C note in any given octave and then compare that to the same C note but in a totally different octave at maybe a different lower or higher pitch, you can go about uh, labeling notes corresponding to the octave that they're played in. And of course kind of the best relative example of this that we have is Western music through well hundreds of years of history with every C note that's when we can go from, say, one octave to the next. And if we turn our attention to the common 88 key piano, we would observe that the lowest note in, uh, or that's available on that piano uh, typically is an A0 note. And then with that 88 key piano, we have a whole eight octaves to work with going up to a C8 note. But even before the age of YouTube, we have some experiments where uh, some composers and instrument makers decided to make instruments that go below that A0 note that you would, again, typically find on that 88 key piano. And as uh, Kevin has talked about, there are the Bosendorf pianos, which actually go down to, I believe it is, uh, C0. And then there's the really funny looking, few in number, very large octave bass instrument, which basically looks like if a, I don't know, an upright bass took too many steroids and hit the gym way too seriously. But why it's important to make note of these instruments in particular is because they are designed to cover the lower octave that truly an 88 key piano only kind of really touches for about three notes. And this is called the subcontra bass octave, or pretty much any note that you see with scientific pitch notation that has a zero by it. What's really fun and fascinating about notes in the subcontra bass octave is the notes are basically on the cusp of what human hearing is capable on the on its lowest end. So without kind of getting some experience and sitting down and actually trying to discern these notes, um, they're kind of hard to he or hear and distinguish. And with some context with some of the other basses I use, one of my five strings is tuned to B standard, which is basically your typical E standard tuning, just add the low fifth B string, 
which is a B0 note. I also use that same bass to tune down to uh, drop A tuning, which is that same A0 note that you again find on the low end of a typical 88 key piano. I have another bass that I use in B flat standard tuning, so that's that same five string tuning on the green bass, tuned down a half step, and so that lowest note is a B flat zero. Now with this particular bass, um, this is one I've had since 2018, and I have put it probably through the most tunings of any bass that I've had ever. But this particular bass, I felt it was a prime candidate that I could use as a mod project to move down just a hair a bit further, we could say, into the subcontra bass octave beyond A0. And so basically what I've come up with is a bass that is tuned low to high, F sharp zero, B0, E1, A1, and D2. Or in kind of guess more simple terms, I've sacrificed the high G string to add this big old thick low F sharp string. Which, now this is a good segue into part two of this video where I'm going to cover the hardware modification aspects of this bass and how I've gotten it to where it is now in this F sharp standard tuning. So a couple initial specifications uh, on this instrument. This is a Yamaha TRBX305 bass. It has active electronics and it has a 34 inch scale length. Scale length again being the point in which the string that leaves the nut travels to the saddle on the end of the bridge. To get started, I removed the existing bass strings as well as the bridge that came stock with this bass. I also removed the existing tuning machines on this bass as they were old and they were starting to break. Though this is more of a cosmetic thing, I also replaced the existing pot knobs with all black ones to match the new hardware going on this bass. I then installed a brand new set of black Godo bass tuners with ease and then secured them in place on the front and back. Because of how I had to insert the strings into the bridge, I bought a top loading hip shot bass bridge. This was important because this bridge was the only way that the .176 bass string from Kalium would even fit on this bass. Speaking of Kalium, they're a company that specializes in custom order string gauges to suit a massive range of needs on guitars and basses, both straight scale and multi-scale designs. I had to file the nut of this bass significantly as well for the thickest strings to fit. I didn't have to replace anything, but I did have replacement nuts on hand for this bass if things did go wrong. And after all that, stringing up and tuning this bass was a breeze. Interestingly, my Headrush pedal board and cord pocket tuner can register and accurately tune the low F sharp zero note. My TC Electronic Polytune 2 on my bass pedal board can't even pick up anything lower than A0. It's probably time for a tuner pedal upgrade. To my surprise, I've had no sort of issues with intonation on the lowest B and F sharp strings when tuning or playing this bass. It's still a pretty fresh string though, so we'll have to see about how long it lasts before I have to replace it. Lastly, for the other four strings on this bass, I used the bottom four strings of an Ernie Ball Super Slinky Bass 5 set. This results in the following string gauges being placed upon this bass. And as I'm sure through all my blabbering already in this video, someone out there has probably posed the question, <laughs> watching this on screen, why? Why, create, or why set up a bass? Why go through the trouble of modding it so that uh, even on this 34 inch scale, you're going to try and play notes that are on the low end of human hearing? Well, the answer to that is extended range guitars. So coming into the fold now, this is my Schecter C8 Deluxe 8 string guitar. Now with this particular bass, the five notes and the five, uh, or five open notes and the five strings on this bass are tuned exactly one octave underneath the bottom five strings on this eight string guitar. Now what's important to know about eight string guitars is that the lowest note and of course the heaviest gauge string on this instrument, this rings out at an F sharp one note. Even further, if I was to drop tune this eight string to drop E, that E note is an E1 note and is the same E1 note that you would find on a four string bass guitar tuned to E standard tuning. question that arises with low tuned guitars is do you want your bassist to play in the same octave or in unison with your low tuned or extended range guitars or do you want your bassist to play super duper low notes a complete octave under what your guitars might be doing i'm not going to purport that one of these two methods is better than the other I think they both have equally applicable contexts and situations that they'll work well in. For playing in unison, the prime example that comes to my mind is Deftones, where uh, Stefan Carpenter and his love of eight strings and nine strings now even, 
uh, and Sergio Vega, their bassist, they all play in unison where the bass is playing in the same octave as uh, Stefan Carpenter's low notes. And then you can have a situation like Andrew Baina's band, Carcosa, where the eight string guitars are tuned to drop E, and then the bass guitars that accompany them on all the recordings that they have right now are tuned also to drop E, but again, that drop E zero in that subcontra bass octave. However, my personal experience only with playing eight string guitar and bass guitars for videos and cover videos on my channel is that I have only played in unison, so all the times that you've heard me do like Deftones covers or my uh, Millennial Musician Ruins Classic Song series, um, that's all done in unison. So for this video, I thought it would be a good idea if I did a couple demos where I am just gonna show uh, just the bass here running alongside the drums, and then I'm gonna run the back the same clip, but I'm gonna drop in the eight string guitar, uh, which again, with it being a whole octave up, is gonna be a lot more probably readily discernible. And just for some additional notes on this, for playing a bass this low with these low, thick strings, I don't find it worthwhile to try and play finger style. Um, I would definitely, if you're gonna go this route for anything, even at any other scale length, I would use a pick, hands down. But I'm also kind of primarily a pick bassist anyway. Additionally, another piece that's gonna help with the bass tone on this is my Dark Glass Microtubes X7 pedal. Um, Dark Glass is amazing and they, uh, of course, a lot of times now uh, I see Dark Glass, they load their preamps into, the, of course, the, or the big fancy Dingwall basses, um, which gives a lot of definition to that sound, um, which, unfortunately, I think I'm going to lack here in this instrument just because I don't have a longer scale length to maybe add some more clarity to the overtones of um, the, these low notes, but we'll see how it goes. So to end this video, I'm not going to say whether or not if I thought the songs and the tone demos that I did, uh, transposing them from their original tunings, if it was any good or not. I want to leave that up to you, the viewer. Uh, if you are watching this, I thank you for <laughs> sticking around this long. Um, I do want to hear from you what you thought of those tone demos. Uh, what do you think of hearing the bass on its own? What do you think of hearing it uh, in relation to the eight string guitars and the drums? I want to hear from you. And really the only thing I would offer if you were going to maybe go into this endeavor yourself uh, to get a bass set up to where you have such low notes that you're trying to cover, I would advise doing a good deal of research on it first. I'm only one small person that's doing this sort of project. 
Um, there are others who have covered in a much more detail. Kevin from Set Too Much and Andrew Baina would be good starting points. Um, I've asked around on dis various uh, Facebook groups and uh, internet forums on bass guitar, um, kind of on this subject. And that's where it, what led me um, to go about the path I did for what I did in my string setup. I very much look forward to reading any comments wherever you're watching this about this particular video and what you think. I think it was a fun project overall. And um, again, something I felt I had the means to do. Just again, it required a little bit of thinking first. Other than that, again, this is just another way that I'm trying to diversify the content here on the channel. But uh, nonetheless, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you on the next video.